Hi, I'm John Bowen, and today I'm going to be giving an introduction to the new Cosmos data migration tool. I'm going to start out today with a brief introduction. Then I'm going to be running through some demos of some common scenarios that the tool is good for. And we're going to wrap up by looking at the code briefly and then at the GitHub project where the code is hosted. A little bit about me. I'm an independent software engineer and a Salience partner. You can find me on Mastodon or at my blog. You can find out more about Salience at our website, salience.net. So the first question, why a new data migration tool? Working with Cosmos, you may have used the old tool, but you may not know that it was originally started in 2015. It was built on the full desktop.net framework, which means it was Windows only. It was also designed using the original document DB client library for .NET, which has since been completely redesigned and now uses a completely different object model. This makes it very difficult to upgrade the old tool. We did try to do that first, but eventually we decided that creating a new tool from scratch would be the best option. At Salience, we used the old tool a lot in our work with Cosmos, and we, we needed to use something better. So we started working with the team at Microsoft to design a new tool. It's built on .NET 6, designed to be cross-platform, and still uses an extensible plugin model to support different data sources. I'm going to run through some demos now. And the first scenario that we're going to look at is saving data out from Cosmos into a JSON file. The first place to start with the new tool is setting up a settings file. This file that I'm going to be using first is named migrationsettings.json. This is the default name for a settings file that the app looks for but you can specify a different one, which we'll see in further demos. The structure of the file includes a source and a sync. So these are both referring to names of extensions in the tool. I'm going to use Cosmos NoSQL as my input and JSON as my output in this case. Along with those, there are two settings sections for source and sync settings. And what goes in here depends on which extension you're using. In this case, I'm using Cosmos, which requires a connection string, a database, and a container. I'm using my local emulator for this demo. So I have the connection string to my local uh, emulator that I'm running. On the JSON side, I'm specifying a file path. In this case, this is a local file, customerdata.json, that I'm going to have created for me. So once I have this set up, I'm going to jump over to PowerShell. And I'm now in the, the same directory as my migration settings file. So all I need to do is run the application using the name DMT. And it's now picked up the file, gives me my file path where it's picking up settings from using the Cosmos NoSQL source in JSON sync. And it tells me where the file got written out to. So now if I look at where the file was created, I can see that I now have data that was pulled from JSON from uh, Cosmos into JSON. And it, if I look at what's in my Cosmos emulator right now, the whole structure matches up. Note here that we do have support for nested objects and arrays. So for the next demo I'm going to do, I'm going to be transferring data the other way. And I'm going to come over to PowerShell again. And I have another settings file. This time I've given it a different name. So I'm not calling it migration settings. And if we look at what's in the file, it does look like the same format as before. But note here that I haven't included a source or a sync. Uh, it isn't required to add these into the, into the settings file. There are other ways to get them in. So we'll look at one of those now. One other piece to note here that's different than before, because I'm reading from JSON, this time I'm using a URL instead of a local file. So I'm still using the file path setting, but I have it pointing to a URL to read my JSON from. There's one other difference here that we'll see in, in just a second when I try to run this. But before I run it, I want to look at the help for the app. And this tells me what the settings are available for me. So here, I can add my source and my sync at the command line. And importantly here, I can also add a different path to my settings file. 
So normally it's just going to look for migration settings.json, but here I've named it something completely different. So I'm going to have to use this as well. So I'm going to start typing dmt run. This run is actually optional. Um, the run command will be used by default if, another, if a command isn't included. And I'm specifying my source as JSON. My sync is Cosmos NoSQL. And then my settings file, which again is in my local directory right now. So let's see what happens when I run this. So you start out the same way, but I'm actually getting an error here that my sync settings are invalid. That's because in the file, I didn't include a database and that is required for Cosmos. So I could go and modify the file, but the other option I have is that I can add it as a command line parameter directly here. And this I can do for any of my sync settings or source settings. I can just add them here with the format sync settings, colon, and then the name of the setting. And here I'm going to be writing into the sales database. So if I run this now, we're going to see similar to before. But in this case, we're using JSON as source and Cosmos as sync. It's reading the file, and now it's writing these records in. And if I jump over and refresh my Cosmos emulator, you can see I now have a new sales database and a records container. And I have items that were read from that JSON file. The next OM I'm going to do is going to be transferring data from Mongo into Cosmos. So here I'm going to be using a Mongo instance in Azure and writing into Azure uh, for Cosmos as well. The other difference here is that I'm going to be executing this from inside Linux. So I'm running Ubuntu in my WSL, and this is a bash prompt um, into that Linux instance. So I can do the same thing here. Look at my file. I have a migration settings file here again. So I'm not going to need to add that as a setting uh, as a settings parameter on the command line. And if we look at what's in the file, I'm back to specifying a source and sync here. So I don't need that to add those like we looked at last time. One thing that is missing this time in both my source and my sync settings, I haven't included a connection string. This obviously is a requirement. This is the place to start both for Mongo and Cosmos. So I do need to have those, but those aren't the kind of things that I would want to add out the command line. So in this case, actually added them here as environment variables. So I have a sync settings connection string and a source settings connection string saved as environment variables in bash. These are going to be picked up the same way as the command line settings that we saw before. So again, if I type DMT or DMT run, it's now going to use migration settings and combine in those environment variables that I have set. So we're now using Mongo source, Cosmos NoSQL sync. And really the only other difference here is if you look at the paths, these are Linux paths rather than Windows paths because we are running in Linux. So both the migration settings, the extensions folder, those are coming from Linux. So now after this, after this gets done executing, you can come over to my Cosmos instance in Azure. And now I see that I have a new sales database and a person container, which has my data that got pulled over from Mongo. For the last demo I'm going to do today, I'm going to run from inside Visual Studio. So this is the solution where the application lives. And I'm going to run this under debug from Visual Studio. I'm using this dataconfig.json. And I'm going to start by copying the path of this, which we're going to use in a minute. For this demo, I'm pulling data from SQL Server, and I'm writing into that same Cosmos instance that we used for the last demo. For SQL, I'm spe specifying a SQL query. And you can see the, the fields here. And again, I don't have my connection string specified in the file. Uh, in this case, because I'm running from Visual Studio, I have it as an environment variable in my launch settings. 
And other thing to note is that I don't have a source or sync specified here. So when I start this up, we're going to get a little bit of a different experience because I am missing some of that data and I haven't specified any command line parameters. So the first thing that happens is I get prompted to add a path to a settings file. So it initially looked for migration settings, didn't find it. So I'm now going to have to use a different path. So I'm using the dataconfig.json file. And the next thing it's going to do is ask me what source and sync I want. So out of the available extensions that it loaded at runtime, it gives me a menu to choose from. And I'm going to pick SQL Server as my source and Cosmos as my sync. So now the app has all of the information it needs. It picked up the connection string from environment variables. It got the path to the settings file from me, and it prompted me for the source and sync. And so it ends up executing the same way as all of our other demos. Now it's written records into Cosmos from SQL. And if I refresh again, I now have an order container. And in these items, you can see that these match up with what was in my SQL query. So a little bit about the code. Um, we just looked at this in Visual Studio. If you go and clone the repo, you'll get exactly the same thing. There are two main parts to this. The core Cosmos uh, application that is the, the console app that we actually execute. And then all of the extensions, of which there are currently five. Right now, all of the extensions support both source and sync usage. Um, and we have Cosmos NoSQL, JSON, Mongo, Azure Table API, and SQL Server. If you do want to get the code, or if you want to read some documentation about using or developing for the app, go to the GitHub project. We're also looking for reports of bugs, any new feature suggestions, so check out the issues list. Uh, also, if you want to add anything new as far as features yourself or make changes to the code, we are looking for pull requests. So uh, get in touch with us, and we're looking forward to hearing from you.